Hey everybody, Grant Sims here at Chief River, talking security, talking LDAP and OAuth. A um, lot of talks out there, a lot of papers, technical documentation that say you can't compare LDAP and OAuth um, because it's a, a, a bit of apples to oranges. However, um, they do come up in similar conversations and I think it's worth comparing and contrasting them uh, to various architectures to understand how they kind of intertwine. Um, just kind of stating that they're apples to oranges, I think, hinders our ability to understand how they play a part uh, in authentication and authorization. So I'm going to wa walk you through LDAP um, authentication and authorization via what we would think of as, as a more legacy application, um, and then walk through some OAuth uh, flows as well that kind of, like I said, compare and contrast how they interrelate. So, um, just to kind of state here the different components we have with the LDAP flow, we have a user agent, in this case it's our browser. Um, we have a client, which is also the resource server. This is your typical web server um, that you might, you know, some type of application you might stand up uh, within your data center. And then we have a backend directory here. Uh, this is LDAP. Commonly, this is Active Directory. Um, so, uh, you know, something to note here, we've, you know, stood up our web server. Um, our application, we pre-configured an integration with our LDAP directory using a service account. This is a typical, um, you know, uh, prerequisite and able to do the lookups and the authentication in the, in the following steps here, but just know that that's already stood up. Um, also know that, you know, as, as we go through this flow, LDAP's been wrong a, a, a while now, and um, TLS was uh, not just the standard it is today. So do realize that uh, you need to optionally enable LDAP-S or TLS so that uh, when we are doing lookups to the directory and connecting to the directory, uh, that this is in fact encrypted. So let's walk through this a little bit. Um, you know, your users pulls up their web browser, there's a form on there um, when they're attempting to authenticate into their, their new uh, web application, it says, give me your username and password. So we are in fact providing the username and password to our user agent to then pass to our you know, web server, and the web server does possess those. Now it's going to you know, use those credentials to um, first look up the principal using that integration I talked about before, the prerequisite, and then it's gonna attempt to bind to LDAP using your username and password. Um, so a little bit of trust concern here, you know, we have to trust our web server, it is possessing these credentials, it is passing those credentials. And then LDAP's going to give us like a you know thumbs up or a thumbs down as far as you know did that application uh, or I said did that username and password authenticate correctly, and then if so it's going to uh, you know pass that success back uh, by creating typically some type of session uh, token. In this case, we're just going to say it's a cookie uh, session cookie set in the browser, and then any subsequent requests to that web server for any type of resources or data. Um, we'll be using that session cooking and whatever uh, session management that this web server is using. Now, I typically, you know, LDAP is an authentication protocol. However, there is some authorization here. Um, the directory contains a lot of information. Uh, it contains group membership, which, you know, you could say if you're group A, you can read. If you're group, you know, B, you can read and write, etc. Um, there's also attributes in here. You could base some type of authorization in your web server off of, you know, department or... Um, you know, any other attribute that's stored within LDAP. So there is some authorization that you can use within your web application via the data from your LDAP directory. So very kind of a, you know, standard application web server where the client resource were the same thing. Um, and, uh, you know, that's where the resources lived. Let's move to, uh, you know, more of um, getting a little bit more modern here. We're actually separating these things out a bit. And, um, what we have here is, uh, you know, OAuth using um, maybe a, a little bit legacy or uh, a command line type of application. Um, and this is, you know, getting a little bit into the details here, resource owner flow. Uh, there's a, this is a little bit simplified from that perspective, but just know that resource owner, owner flow doesn't get all the benefits of OAuth here, but um, it does still, uh, you know, provide us a way to centralize identity and <clears throat> centralized authoriz authorization as well. So walking through this, let's just say that this isn't a web uh, uh, isn't a web based client. This is like a command line interface. The user in this case is still providing a username and password to that client. So we got to trust this client. Um, that client then is going to send that username and password to the authorization server. 
that authorization server is going to basically say, you know, the same thing our LDAP server said before, you know, is this, uh, you know, did the user authenticate um, successfully? If so, let's give them some tokens, um, access tokens and or refresh tokens. And then for any subsequent um, calls similar to the session cookie up above, we're going to be sending those access tokens to our resource. And this resource could be uh, similar to the web server above. It could be um, an API gateway. And similar to the LDAP configuration before, just realize there is a pre-configured trust between the authorization server and the resource server. I didn't want to confuse this, but uh, just to kind of note that this is very typical, on the back end of your authorization server in your IDP, you might be connecting to an LDAP. You might still have Active Directory as your source of truth here. It's optional. Those identities could live directly in the IDP. We just kind of wanted to call that out that you will see this um, in, in typical configurations in the enterprise. One thing to note too, you know, OAuth isn't as old as, as, as uh, LDAP and you know, TLS is the standard. All this information will be over TLS and encrypted. Um, so it isn't much different than uh, you know what's going on up here. Just we're introducing some new components like an authorization server, and we're splitting out the resources here. Um, but very similar, and, and we have the same issues. We're we're still trusting our clients to possess our username and passwords. Uh, moving down here now to more of a modern application. This we're going to be looking at from like a single page application or an SPA. Uh, that, that we see a lot of these days where, um, you know, we have the single page application, we have our resources similar to above, and we have our auth server. In this case, though, our user agent is a web browser, and this enables us to gain um, some additional benefits or security measures uh, within the flow here. Um, this is, uh, you know, roughly the authorization code flow, just in case you go a little bit deeper on this. But let's walk through this a little bit and contrast it to above. So the user is going to connect to the application uh, via a web browser. Um, we're going to go to, you know, HTTPS myapplication.com or whatever it may be. And we're going to suck down a bunch of JavaScript. Um, in these single page applications, just realize that it's just a bunch of JavaScript within your browser um, that is re-rendering and, and manipulating the DOM as you're clicking and, and interacting with the application. Um, when it gets sucked down, the user sees a, a login button. And so that user is going to click that login button. Now, this is where it changes uh, greatly from the flows above. So what that uh, JavaScript is going to do is say, hey, I just saw the user click. Um, you know, they want to log into this application. It's going to send a redirect to your web browser. And that's going to basically, in a sense, start a new client. You're going to have a new tab open up, a new browser window open up completely separate from your client application that is then going to send you to your IDP and authorization server. This is where the user will then input their username and password directly to the IDP. So therefore the client, the JavaScript, has no idea in this case what your actual username and password is. This is very beneficial from a security measure. If that is successful, if the authentication to that is successful, then the auth server will redirect you back to the client application and provide that client application tokens. And these tokens have nothing to do with your username and password. They are basically just um, you know, short-lived tokens that allow this client to now access these resources on your behalf. So now when the client needs a resource in this case, it'll send those short-term tokens over to your resource and then the resource will return those as long as they are valid. So. Once again, just wanted to kind of compare and contrast the um, OAuth and LDAP, how they kind of interrelate when it comes to centralizing identities and how architecture kind of plays a part in um, you know, how you can compare and contrast them. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, thoughts, comments, you know, please leave them down below. And if you liked what you saw today, please press the like button and subscribe. Um, otherwise, have a great day, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Thank you. Bye.